All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening. This is Bryn with Train by Tex, and this is our second video in our Pico Scope series for beginning users. The first video we did, we showed you where and how to download the Pico Scope software, and in this one, we're going to go over some of the main tools within the software that you're going to be using pretty much anytime you use Scope. And with that, we'll get started. Right now, we're in demo mode, which is a nice feature. It allows you to open the software and use it without being physically connected to a car so you can get familiar with the software right here this little blue trace signal generator is for the demo mode you click on that and each channel you'll have four options to choose from and a injector voltage injector current ignition and crank uh, sensor this button will of course go away when you're not in demo mode the two waveforms we have in demo mode uh, the Channel A, the blue waveform, is injector voltage, and channel B, the red waveform, is in uh, reading, measuring, or displaying, I should say, injector current. So this top toolbar here is what we're going to focus in on today. The, and we'll go over them real quick just to say what they are, and then we'll go back over them in more detail after that. So starting with the top left is the time division, uh, or collection time in this case. The next one is the sample rate. The one after that is a waveform buffer index. So that's the pages that the uh, scope is saving. You can go back through and look at those when you've when you're done when you stop the capture. This section here is the section for manipulating the capture after you've stopped it. And then down below are your channel settings. So being a four channel scope, you have of course four channels, but Pico labels them A B, C, and D. So going back up here to the top left, this 5ms forward slash div, that's the collection time, and we're going to, a couple times throughout these video series, we're going to compare this the Pico product to Snap-on because in my opinion, or in my experience, these are the two most common scopes on the market with regard to automotive scope usage. Uh, a lot of Snap-on users are transitioning over to PicoScope. I want to make sure that you know some of the main differences. Uh, with PicoScope, their time setting is displayed in sweep speed, and that's the entire collection time on the screen. Pico, by default, does time per division. And if you see, you have 10 divisions that represent time from left to right here at 5 milliseconds per division. Each one of these 10 divisions is 5 milliseconds, so total sweep time would be 50 milliseconds, where Snap-on, by default, will be sweep speed, so this will display 50 milliseconds for the entire collection time. Now, the other difference with Pico and Snap-on, Snap-on products do better, uh, Modus, Virus, Zeus, with less time on the screen. And you would put less time on the screen, and you would allow the signal to just collect uh, several pages in their buffer and then you would stop it zoom out on all of the pages and then zoom back in in the area that you'd want to analyze pros and cons to both um, picoscope most users realize that it's easier to just put a lot of time on the screen and just zoom in to where on the trace that you want to analyze just the main two differences uh, within the product and it has to do with the capabilities within the product and just how they're used. They're just used differently. Again, for the most part, less time on a Snap-on product and more time on a Pico scope. Moving on to the next one here is the sample rate per second, or number of samples per second. But typically, uh, most Pico scope users will keep it in the one to five million samples per second for most of the traces you're looking for. But with, it really just depends on what circuit you're wanting to acquire and analyze the signal on. Um, a lot of slower circuits on an automotive uh, vehicle, you wouldn't need even probably one million samples. You could get away with doing less. But for high-speed signals like um, acquiring and analyzing ignition events, but m more so um, network communication uh, signals, you would want a lot more sample rate. So it does make a difference if you have too much sample rate on certain sig signals within the vehicle, then the signal or the trace will be just be too noisy, and then you'd have to filter it uh, back down, filter the noise out. Uh, so it definitely makes a difference. Uh, you want to choose your sample rate based off the signal you're acquiring, and we'll go over that in more detail uh, in some of the uh, videos that we'll be producing in the future. The next window here is the 
waveform buffer index. So just as I was saying, you know, when I was describing the difference between Pico and Snap-on, both are digital storage oscilloscopes. You know, originally oscilloscopes were analog and you could only analyze the trace as it's being displayed live. It didn't store or save any of the capture. Digital storage oscilloscopes, we can benefit from the fact that they're able to store the capture and you can stop them, save them, and analyze them. And with the page uh, waveform buffer index, just save, you can see uh, 15 out of 15, that means it's saving 15 of these screens. So when you go to stop, down here at the bottom left is a red square, that's how you can stop the capture. Another way you can stop the capture, by the way, is hitting the space bar. But just keep in mind, sometimes hitting the space bar does not stop the capture. So. And especially in some cases where the software is kind of um, sluggish, that can happen sometimes. You hit the space bar and it doesn't stop it right away and you think you have to hit it again. Well, you hit it again and then you've lost all the uh, pages in the buffer because it did stop it, it just didn't happen immediately. And then you go to hit the space bar again and it's you're like restarting it. So with the space bar you can stop and restart it, but sometimes it might be safer to you know keep your cursor over the red square so that you can stop it that way. Uh, but there are those two options. So with the waveform buffer index you can see we've stored 15 pages. We're on the 15th of the 15th page. So you can scroll back through and you can see the different pages you'll see you're able to view that page and then you can use these zoom features to manipulate it zoom in and out of the capture for analyzing purposes all right now this little dial looking deal just to the right of the uh, waveform buffer index is the buffer overview this is a pretty cool feature uh, you click that and you have a pop-up window box here that helps you to at a, at a glance see what pages are what and you can scroll you know, through uh, individually one at a time with these arrows here and then the far arrows to the left and right will bring you to the very first and very last one and then you can zoom out. Um, personally I like to just be in this mode it's easier for me. It's, uh, you zoom out and it's just kind of gets more difficult to see but of course there are scenarios where that might be helpful so definitely a, a neat feature within the software. Um, help you to at least view the pages as you're scrolling through. So that moves us to our next area in just a moment, but I do want to mention the amount of pages that you'll have in a buffer to view depends on how many channels you have, what your sample rate is, and what your time base is. The more time base, the higher sample rate, the more channels added to it, the more stuff that's going on, you'll have less pages to view. The next area here is for being able to zoom in and out. The first one here is a horizontal zoom, and if you'll click to the right, you can see that we're kind of zooming in horizontally. And anytime you use any of these zoom features here, you'll have a zoom overview here, which is a window that's kind of showing you that whole page, and it's showing you a, the gray box area is where you're zoomed in. And right here at the bottom, you have this slide that will allow you to move the gray box within the zoom overview so you can see exactly where you want to zoom in. Several ways you can back out of that zoom. You can hit the undo zoom here once, twice. Uh, if you want to go all the way to the beginning, you can close this zoom overview window and it will put you right back at square one. Or you can hit this magnifying glass with the hundred on it. That will also bring you all the way back. The next two here, I'm going to go back to this one because this one's my, the windowed zoom is my favorite, but these zoom in and zoom out, the magnifying glass with a positive and negative sign, you just simply click it, put the uh, cursor in the area that you want to zoom, and then click it. Each time you click it, you're zooming in. Then you would go back to the magnifying glass with the negative sign, click on it, and come back here and keep clicking until you're back to square one. So that's the zoom features. Uh, I'm going to talk about this windowed zoom, which is the one I pretty much always use. I don't use the other ones very much. With a windowed zoom, you can just put it kind of where you'd like to zoom in. You click the left mouse button and drag to zoom in whatever area of the capture you want to. You know, you can keep zooming in even tighter and tighter. Uh, go back one at a time again with this. 
uh, you can click the magnifying glass with 100% to bring it back, or you can close the zoom overview to bring it back to square one. Well, that concludes this video. We've covered some of the main features that you're going to need to get started. In our next video, we'll cover the individual channel settings and features, as well as some basic trigger functions. Thank you so much for your time and attention. If we've missed anything or made any mistakes in, at all, please don't hesitate to leave any comments. If you have any things specific questions-wise or anything that you want us to see us do, uh, please comment on that as well. We ask you to like the video and subscribe to our channel and definitely keep an eye out for anything new that we have coming out. Uh, of course, in this case specifically, we're going to have a lot more detailed PicoScope videos. So stay tuned for those and uh, take care.